good morning of our fifth day five day national level research and academic skill development program which is basically a part to commemorate the 132nd birth anniversary of indian allies father none other than padmasri dr s ranganathan ayar and this is our third day today tomorrow and day after tomorrow we will have two more sessions and we have already passed two sessions in that way we are made of our program and usually we sort of like network is organizing this kind of program not only to commemorate livians day but also to nurture our indian and abroad academic galaxy to feed some sort of new insights of our practical experience being librarian of our recent development in the elias field research field ict to the best of our capacity and then to make it more and more useful qualitative pertinent we are not only limiting to invite our resource persons from only university from only elias faculty from only west bengal from only india we have make it open and as a part of that and i am very pleased to state from my side that today we have with us one of our library professionals from india who is supposed to be carry out the role of public library inciting public library not only in the state or indian territory of chandigarh punjab or a part of north india or a part of india or india across that she is trying to showcase our you know public library service under a generic concept throughout the global level showcase means she is a person who is having a experience of visiting different foreign countries across the world and having some direct experience to meet with different international icons who are dealing with public library service ict based library service academic library service research library service and many more so that's why when i try to find out one person who will have some impetus on public library then from many corner i would have her name i know her very well on different occasions and i am a regular listener of her lecture whenever i am getting scope i'll join and listen her then i tried to call madam dr nija singh and last week just a sudden call without thinking twice she just asked me my uh, identity then she glad to accept my oral invitation and agreed and give her kind consent to enlight us that okay sir i will be there in the board and uh, whatever date or wednesday thursday you will decide i will be there then just by few hours we are getting final and then i am coming out this notification and more than that she is also posting these things in social network means her own facebook to make it propagate and that's why i am saying it's not only resource sharing rather professional experience and professional initiative sharing too because this is not of a duty to share my notification in the facebook or some other arena being a library professional i am very glad to again state that she is a person who is having this kind of mindset to extend her open access cooperation whomsoever be it abroad be it nation be it chandigarh be it wherever so if anybody call her ma'am is there to extend her expertise support to extend the service support to the best of his of her capacity so with this few words now let me wrap it up and i am very humble to request my colleague dr sonod bhattacharya who is supposed to be heading our science library called institute of science 
So may I now request my colleague, Dr. Sanodda, to introduce formally ma'am in board before starting our lecture. So Sanodda, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, University Librarian, sir, for giving me the chance to introduce Dr. Vija Singh, a librarian of the TS Central State Library in Chandigarh, which is part of the Chandigarh Department of Higher Education. Dr. Nija Singh holds a PhD and a master's degree in library and information science with a gold medal from Punjab University in Chandigarh. She is currently employed as a librarian at the TS Central State Library in Chandigarh by the Chandigarh Department of Higher Education. She is one the International Federation of Library Association of Institute IFLA Netherlands Standing Committee member. She was given the state award by the Honorable Governor of Punjab and in April 2023. As sleep honored her with the best female library personality of the year award on the 75th Ajadi Ki Amrit Mahatsab, she was recognized as one of the top 75 pioneering libraries in the country. In addition to many others, she has received the Jinda Dil Award 2018 for her outreach effort to the unprivileged in Gujarat Public Library Award 2019, apart from many more. She has 18 years of experience as a public librarian out of her 20 years career. She has held position as a college librarian at Sri Guru Gobind Singh College in Chandigarh. And with the British Library in Chandigarh, she was also the director of US Embassy American Corner at Chandigarh Central State Library. Dr. Nija is a mentor and innovator with Enli India International Network of Emerging Library Innovators, a program of public librarian sponsored by Bill and Mill India Gates Foundation. She is running several cutting edge outreach projects in her library for all age groups and various communities. In addition to her creative library service, she helped the less fortunate by hosting reading and library session for kids in slum, villages, etc. During the pandemic, Nari Nikatan and the Chandigarh government donated school book with her initiative to aid the less fortunate. During Corona, she engaged the neighborhood with her literary and library initiative, which were even recognized globally. Reading a library session for children in village, slum, etc. She is involved in the following activity Swachya Bharat Vijan, Nas Nasamukti Bharat Vijan, panel advisor for North India with Read India project. That is a famous project, Read India. You know, our National Library, ex Library, and Kalpana Dasgupta Madam also involved in this Read India project. She has a long list of domestic and international accomplishment. She paid public libraries, librarian visit in several cities, including Chicago, San Francisco, New York, Scotland, London, and Singapore, etc. Dr. Nija edited books and authored several research papers. She has presented invited lectures and served on panels for professional discussion at numerous national and international conferences, seminars, and workshops. She has helped numerous organizations with data libraries. Thank you, Madam. Welcome to Vishwavarti. Now, session is here. Thank you. Thank you so much for your uh, warm introduction <laughs> and uh, appreciations for me. I would like to thank uh, Nimai Chan, sir, for inviting me and having me in this session and uh, Sanat sir for this wonderful introduction. Thank, Thank you. you. I am indeed very, very grateful to you uh, to have invited me on this occasion and especially 132nd birth anniversary of Father of Library Science, Dr. S. R. Rangana. Can I just share my slide? Yes, madam. Yes, it is visible. Okay. So very good morning to 
all the attendees today. It's so wonderful to connect with all of you. And I hope you find my topic interesting. I have chosen uh, library services aligning with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals because I feel that it is the responsibility of each and every librarian to align what with the global goals and prove how worth you are or how important you are. Initially, when IFLA, uh, sorry, United Nations came out with these uh, goals, which is which are known as the Sustainable Development Goals uh, 2030, which started in the year 2015, uh, and they are supposed to go on till 2030. In its, uh, you can say, the inviting organizations, there were all sorts of government offices, schools, colleges, and uh, other boards, but the libraries, they were not mentioned in their original uh, concrete program which came out. So IFLA was very worried about this, that why not libraries? And so a program was held and the recommendations were given to the United Nations. And finally, they realized the value of libraries and how libraries can contribute to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And finally, it was listed in there. You can open the United Nations website and very particularly, you will find the role of libraries in that. So that was a big achievement uh, by IFLA. And since I'm also a standing committee of the Metropolitan Libraries Committee in IFLA, so we just work thoroughly with these sustainable development goals, promoting these goals that all the librarians should come out and do activities related to these goals so that we make a mark in the global community. So I found that I should bring this to you. So I have chosen this topic. So let me move further. So the Division of Sustainable Development Goals in the United Nations take care of these issues, which are the global issues, whether it is water, energy, climate, urbanization, transport, science, technology, etc., etc. But libraries have a major role to play. We can have a very important say in any of these uh, topics you say. For example, we pick out climate and oceans and we wonder what can libraries do in this? I think there's going to be hardly any contribution. But on the other hand, we have a very, very important role to play no matter whatever the goal is. So basically, what are the sustainable development goals? So these words are by Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of United Nations. So he says it's a kind of a to-do list for the whole Earth, the whole planet, which will transform the world as such. So we as librarians, we should just take a very important part in this program. So there are 17 goals of the United Nations and the agenda 2020, 2030, uh, which I already told you, started in 15 and it goes up to 2030. So this is a 15 year agenda. And most probably the most prominent thing are the five P's, which are planet, people, peace, prosperity, partnership, and the sixth P, which was included at a later stage, was participation. So no one should get left behind and everybody should participate in this. So what are the issues which go around the sustainable development goals? So every country has developed its own plan, its own action plan, so that they can achieve those goals. Like, for example, India. India has developed its own action plan and every state has its own action plan. There's a kind of a checklist which is taken out by the government of India and all the states and union territories are supposed to fill up these uh, this action plan points sort of a thing. It's a kind of a uh, sheet which they have to... I came across the Chandigarh C sheet, so I found that a lot of things have been done. So why not libraries be involved? So I think most of you will also be unaware that your states are doing a lot in this and you have to show this by showing your contribution through your libraries. So this is uh, the 17 goals which are on your screen. I'll just briefly 
or just a in a screenshot i'll just go through so there are 17 goals namely no poverty zero hunger good health and well being quality education gender equality clean water and sanitation affordable and clean energy decent work and economic growth industry innovation and infrastructure reduced inequalities sustainable cities and communities responsible consumption and production climate action life below water life on land peace justice in strong institutions and the last one is partnership for the goals which is a kind of an umbrella for all the goals because this goal of partnership through this goal we can just enter all such goals because we can partner with other organizations so associate with other organization and take part in achieving the other goals as well so now we will study these goals one by one in detail and corresponding what can libraries do to achieve those goals so coming on to the first one is no poverty which says end poverty in all its forms everywhere so how can library support this goal so i have made a checklist which you can see on the screen number 1 is that libraries have all sorts of information resources that mainly we have so no matter what goal it is we can contribute to that goal by acquiring or giving access to the community the information and the resources to improve their lives so we can give them training in new skills for their education and employment and we can give them information so that they can take decisions which are further uh, constituted by the government civil societies businesses to combat combat the poverty so the no poverty goal can be achieved by applying all these uh, activities which the library can do so these are just the pointers which further say that what all individual activities can be do for example on no poverty we can uh, go into the slums we can aware them about this or we can make book displays in our own libraries related to that we can sensitize further the communities about this goal so that how can they further connect with the communities to achieve this and we can provide them personalized uh, you can say personalized help so that they can overcome this so a lot of things we will go one by one and in the end we'll have a sort of a varied variety of services so coming up to goal number 2 which is zero hunger so it says end hunger achieve food security and improved nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture so all these things come under the zero hunger so how can libraries promote this by the providing data for agricultural research so they by that we have good crops and which are our fields are more productive and provide these services to farmers so online services can also be provided to farmers uh, regarding this so this is the main uh, activities which the library can do and also provides all sorts of reports about weather prices new equipment all such things to the farmers as well as the decision makers so this way we can play a role so one prominent example which i have mentioned here is about the romanian uh, public library so the staff over there they give training to 1 lakh farmers okay and they have taught them the use of new itc or ict services so that they can further apply those to uh know the agricultural subsidies and which resulted in us dollar 187 million so that was a great achievement by this library so this has been prominently mentioned by plus so i just pick this up so librarians are supposed to be very innovative so touching these points we can uh, do all sorts of services in our libraries next is goal 3 good health and well being which says ensure healthy lives and promote well being for all at all ages so no matter what the age group is you need to promote the well being now the well being also consists to be physical as well as mental these days so how can libraries promote this 
So research, uh, which is available in medical and hospital libraries, which can support education, and uh, which is very useful for the med medical practitioners as well as the patients. And public access to health and wellness information in public libraries or uh, no matter what libraries you are in, we generally have all sorts of books here. So you can do special displays of such books and you can hold sessions in your libraries regarding maybe some health talks. Uh, you should never think that it is not the work of the library to do such things. When other departments can just interfere or do whatever we want to, what, why not the library? The library can take initiative and organize all sorts of events, maybe a health talk. If you are in a college library or in a school library, in a university library, to initiate through the library. So maybe the university association with the central library is organizing a blood donation camp or is organizing a talk by, on a particular topic by some doctor, maybe on a cancer or something. You can organize plays, nukkar nataks around that because in educational institutions, there are students who are related to theater and dramas. So in all, every theme, such kind of things can be organized. Coming to the next fourth goal, which says ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. So this is directly related with the libraries, providing quality education and promoting lifelong learning. So all the books, all the resources which we have and the staff which we have, which we, which supports our readers is, is immensely contributing to this goal. And further the introduction of uh, ICT, improve, improving the computer skills of the library users, enabling them how to use online resources, promoting open access, all comes under this scope. So that is how we can create lifelong learning opportunities for our community. And further inside the library, you should kind of create an inclusive spaces. Inclusive spaces, which is not creating a barrier for anyone. It is open for everyone. So libraries should provide a kind of a safe space an open space and should be the most comfortable space. I say in my library that my library should be a second space for you. First space being your homes, your houses. The library should be the second comfortable space where you always want to be. So coming to the fifth goal, gender equality. It says achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. So you should take up special programs which are aligned to this a special example have these has been given by uh, given here it's the national library of uganda which created special ict training for women so that women farmers so that they have uh, they can access the weather reports the crop prices the online markets in their local languages so they have uh, so that they have easy use of such resources if they have ict education and we can organize programs and services designed to meet the needs of uh, women and girls' rights and their health. So legal rights of women can be done. So women hygiene and a lot of topics uh, can be done on that. And we can give them a space, a safe space in the life. Although it is good if they are merging, maybe the males or the females, they are studying together, but some have an hesitation. So you should make that space very, very comfortable for them. And in your institution, if you feel there should be a separate space, you can just mark there that this table or this sitting is for women only, which will give a very, very clear indication. The fifth goal, ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for so water and sanitation is very important and libraries can support these goals by giving them quality information, how important it is, and to sensitize them with the good practices that can be done. Like at homes, how can you have pure and clean water? What are the different aspects? So maybe you can have such kind of a session in library, you can give them information through books, you can display information, and maybe you can have uh, SDG of the month and all the activities can be uh, around that goal. 
like if you're having this dual clean water and sanitation, you may you can have a book display, you can have a talk with someone, you can organize a competition. So these ideas go with all the goals. And free and reliable access to electricity and light to read, study, and work. So this is also provided by the library. Goal seven, which is affordable and clean energy. This also goes with the previous one, which says uh, free and reliable access to electricity and light to read. So we'll go further, which is goal eight, and which says promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth full and productive employment and decent work for all. So you should help the community, your users to obtain jobs. And what are the various ways which the libraries can do? You can give them access to information. You can give them skill training and you can help them to find the required job you can, to apply for job and to succeed in the job, whatever skills they need to succeed in that job. Maybe you can have a, a corner in your library where you can just pin up all the jobs which have come up. You can support students for research through collection and consultation and usage of computers to support employment related activities. Goal nine, which is industry innovation and infrastructure, which says build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Now, how how can libraries contribute to this? So there's a widespread infrastructure which exists in our country, okay? And public and research libraries and skilled library professionals can very well uh, provide this service. There are a lot of organizations and special kind of libraries also exist in this. But normally the libraries can also do by maybe uh, having partnership or doing association with other organizations welcoming and inclusive spaces in another part and access to ICT like high-speed internet that may not be available anywhere else. Like in our library itself, we have a lot of PGs which have come up from other states and they are residing here. So where they were staying on rent or whatsoever, such kind of speed internet services are not provided there. So at this point of time, maybe there are 600, 700 students who are studying there and enjoying the high speed internet. So this is uh, very important for them. Goal 10 says reduce inequality within and among countries. So not just locally, but globally. And library can support this goal by providing neutral and welcoming spaces, even to the minorities, refugees, migrants, indigenous persons, or persons with disabilities. You should not make any difference especially based on caste, creed. Everyone should be welcome, even transgenders. You should not differentiate between anyone. Give a welcoming look. Let me tell you, the looks really, really matter. Because if a person is entering and you give him a very disgraceful look, that person will not feel good at all. He will not feel welcome. He will think twice before entering the library next. So you should give a welcoming, smiling look to everyone who enters the library. And mind it, it makes a lot of difference. I think half of your problems are solved if you give a very welcoming look and attend that person with kindness. So equitable access to information, which is which supports the economic, social, and political goals. And you make the resources available for people to learn new languages and skills. And the financial literacy and the digital literacy also comes in this part. So you can organize such kind of programs. You can also uh, partner with the other departments of your organization. For example, if it's financial literacy, you partner with the commerce department, commerce department, or if it's digital literacy, you partner with the uh, computer department. So such kind of things can be done. Goal 11, sustainable cities and communities. It says, make cities and human settlements inclusive and safe, resilient and sustainable. And libraries support this by providing, by being rather trusted institutions, which promote cultural inclusions and understanding. So inclusivity really matters. And next, documentation and preservation of our cultural heritage. 
so so that the future generations which come up they have an access to uh, such material or information resources goal 12 responsible consumption and production which says ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns so library support can support this by providing a sustainable system of sharing and circulating materials that reduce waste so maybe you can make your library paperless use less paper correspond with through emails or the file work can also be done online there are a lot of apps and softwares which have come up you don't even need to take a print out and circulate files from table to table everybody can uh, have an access through their computer through the network over there goal 13 take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact so this is a very serious problem and worldwide people are really worried because they are there is a change every day the season doesn't remain the same like the previous one at times it's so hot at times when there is uh, supposed to be a winter season but still it is sort of summer or it's a hot weather and the kind of uh, flooding which is happening all around so it's really really worrisome and libraries can also support this by the research and data which is required to inform uh, while making such climate change policies so next 14th is life below water which is conserve and sustainably use the oceans seas and marine resources for sustainable development so libraries can support this obviously by the research data they can provide for problem solving and also the historical uh, records which are available in the libraries about the coastal change and land use here i would like to mention that uh, in india the mssrf in chennai they have made an app for the fishermen to tell them about the weather conditions so that when they go into the sea they can plan the time and whether there is a danger at that time so they are given notifications through that app and the other south indian uh, libraries who are at the coastal regions they are making use of the uh, app mssrf is ms swaminathan research foundation in chennai so these kind of partnerships and associations can be done goal 15 protect restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem sustainable managing forests combating the desertification halt and reverse land degradation and called biodiversity loss so life on land one major thing which you can do is ban plastic you should make it very very uh, prominent in your libraries asking people the like users the community not to use glass plastic use cloth bags instead so kind of such kind of slogans can be uh, put there and actively libraries can uh, provide support they can widespread access to information needed in uh, for uh, decision making by the government and they can also uh, provide awareness services to the Uh, users of the library making book displays and uh, some topics which are very prominent are hunting fishing land use and water management such kind of decisions can be made only by the library services the kind of information resources that you maintain and such pin pointed information can be provided by the libraries goal 16 peace justice and strong institutions which says promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development provide access to justice for all build effective accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels so how can library support the school they can provide public access to information about government other institutions and other civil societies can provide training to understand and use the information and being inclusive politically neutral and providing safe spaces for people to meet and organize uh, talks and other programs so uh, for peaceful society and providing justice uh, we have uh, partnered with a local high court over here and very soon we will be having a session every week uh, 
uh, they will give a kind of a talk in the first session and then uh, every week they are going to uh, kind of an organize a camp in which people can personally ask them of any personal problems they are facing legally so legal consultation will be uh, done in that so that's going to be really useful because many at times many people they are hesitant even if they are suffering from something maybe things like domestic violence or any other personal issue which the senior citizens are suffering they feel hesitant to go maybe to a lawyer or to the courts or anywhere so we will provide them this services at the library so they can come whatever time they feel comfortable and they can have a chat with them the last goal and i feel this is the strongest of all goal to achieve other goals which is partnership for the goals so we it says strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development and libraries can be part of the global network and they can bring communities together and support the local development plans so they can partner with any any organization so at my library we are doing a lot of programs in partnership and in association so we partner with schools we partner with colleges and uh, we started one book delivery program here in which we partnered with a college and we used to get nss students from that college as volunteer to give delivery of books at home so they used to get credit points for their courses and for the library it would well and by the partnership with various literary organizations for events for cultural events and then with ngos with various government departments with state uh, aids authority and we organize a lot of talks and programs with them for hospitals we partner and we do uh, this medical awareness programs blood donation camps and all such things with publishers and booksellers we partner to organize uh, book this uh, sorry book exhibitions and we partner with banks for financial literacy and we have also partnered with other libraries in this regard so i will uh, come to that very soon in what all programs and activities that we organize here and that link to the sustainable development goals in fact currently also whatever you are providing whatever services you are providing can be linked to any one of these sustainable development goals but you should not keep just one goal in mind you should spread across the other goals and think how can we uh, spread upon the other goals how can we provide services how can we be part of the global goals and help to achieve all these sustainable development goals so this one i wanted to share this is public library in tiruvannamalai which i happened to visit it is in tamil nadu and this library is providing this skill development of tailoring so how many goals can be achieved in this you see first goal which is no poverty and that goal of giving employment the goal of gender neutrality so all such goals one activity is not just limited to one goals many goals can be evolved around one activity that we are doing and here in my library i've kept such charts so that we are always reminded about the goal so i'm carrying here with me so these are the goals and we have pinned them up on the notice board to remind everyone that such goals exist and we have to provide services for the library staff we have to provide services and for the community to know that such goals exist and you should also contribute to achieve those goals to sensitize the community as well so the next picture is from a village library in thotiam this is also in tamil nadu is a village library in tamil nadu so what these people do they provide this a uh, plant clinic program in which the farmers they get a particular part of the crop a leaf or a root which is damaged and experts are present here and they tell you what is the cause of this problem and they give you solutions over there so these kind of services are being provided in the libraries so i happened to visit this place as well 
This is another community library in Kalda village, which is located in a panchayat ghar. And women empowerment is very prominent because here in this area, the women need, need really special uh, provision for all such things. So they have made this area exclusively for women. So now coming to my library. So I will let you know what all activities and services we are doing, what all we are providing, so that you have an idea that how much can we go beyond a particular, not going beyond the limit, but with the available resources that we have, what all can we do? How can we think out of the box? I'm sure a lot of things are already being done, but just to share what is happening here. And at the end of all these activities, which I'm going to present here, I also have a task for you. So be prepared for the task. So I'll just go through whatever we are doing uh, at my library. Since uh, I was introduced that I travel abroad, so I really like to recollect what all I learn and to adopt here, to imply here, whatever it is possible. Because at times everything is not possible. So I have uh, divided them according to the type of community, children, women, single citizens and all. So for children, what are we doing? Number one, safe spaces. As in the presentation, a lot of time space spaces came into mention that this is very important. So a very safe space for children we provide. They feel happy over there when they come over here. So parents also come along with children and this kind of a peaceful environment we are providing and making them at ease. A lot of children workshops are organized from time to time, like craft making. And this one was particularly, uh, which you can see on the left hand side was on the dental care. And this was a drama workshop that we did, particular on the theme of dental care because a lot of children, they are really negligent about their dental uh, fitness. And many children, they don't brush their teeth when they are at a early stage. You really have to pressurize, press upon them. So this theme-based play was organized for the children and it was presented in the library. So we taught them this play during the workshop and they presented this play and we invited the parents and others to the community. Illustrated bookmaking workshop. This is another uh, workshop which we do from time to time in which children create their own books and these books are displayed in the library so that the children have a sense of belongingness of the space that this is their space and their handmade book is in the library. So we do also do this on a lot of themes like climate change. Uh, play performances maybe on a lot of other themes that we keep organizing. Uh, for the environment, to keep the environment green, to keep the environment clean, and how to behave with other people, respect others. So these are the few themes that we require, and they directly go with the sustainable development goals. Storytelling sessions on different themes. So we mark the important days, and the storytelling is done on that theme. So this is also very common here in our library. Confidence building workshop. So for the children, this kind of workshops are very important because every child doesn't have an opportunity maybe in their school space. So we provide them this space in which they can be them and they can learn other skills over here because we are not going to judge them. We are not going to differentiate them and we are not going to grade them like these are the toppers and these are the middle ones or these are the children, non-performing children. Everybody is equivalent for us. science experiment workshops, actually doing the science experiments here, then poster making on different themes and we display the posters. So for example, uh, you can make poster making uh, on maybe each H, uh, SDG, you can pick up that theme and you can display those posters. You can have an exhibition, you can invite a guest from outside to view that exhibition. And you don't need a separate space. Maybe you can just display on the tables in the library, which will suffice. 
competitions in which all schools and colleges are invited and we have competitions on other various themes celebrating other important days and festivals so everybody comes up and celebrates orientation and library visits is also a very important part in which the students they are invited and they are told about the facilities at the library and they are uh, motivated to use the library dental checkup camps environment day celebration is also done with great pomp and show every year and we have made these kind of bags which says don't use plastic bags use cloth bags so this these kind of bags were made at that time and distributed as prizes book display and impromptu quiz no matter what hd sdg goal it is you can organize a book display in your library and an impromptu quiz what is an impromptu quiz quiz at that time you don't need a formal quiz set up you see keep a set of questions with you you fold those questions put them in a bowl and randomly who is walking into that library can just pick up that slip and answer to that question if he is right you can just give a small maybe a toffee a pencil a pen depending on what you can give and if you cannot give maybe if your budget doesn't allow so just uh, clap from every so that will suffice and they will feel happy about it and maybe you can click the picture of the win winners and put them on social media on your live please page which make them really really happy then for youth adults specifically what we are organizing same poster making competitions for these children as well and celebration of important days plantation drives yoga camp motivational talks for the students who are preparing for competitive exams it helps them in their employment builds a sense of confidence in them so we invite important persons to conduct such sessions health talks blood donation camps regularly cultural programs for the cultural diversity which is also a very important goal of the united nations open mic so that people come out with their uh, inhibitions can be avoided and they are able to speak whatever in this in their mind no matter what the topic is it play on aids awareness also we organize at regular intervals this is also done in partnership with the state legal aids society so this is a nukkar natak which has been done outside the library so normal public can also view this and sensitize session on conscious parenting this session for parents also we hold so that if they have any problem with their children they can discuss with the counselor an open session is also held and one on one sessions are also there telemedicine session so if the doctor is not able to come here in person at your premises you can organize it through uh, an online group awareness session on gst when the gst came up so we organize this awareness session for the community annual prize distribution function is held by us every year in which we honor all the people who have won prizes in various categories and we also honor the best readers like best family reader best youngest reader best student reader best senior citizen reader so we have these five categories and we honor them so best family reader is one in which the grandparents the parents and children everybody is coming together to read i think this one can specifically done in public libraries in which we can have the siblings and the parents coming along for women uh also for skill development and taking care of the women empowerment so we have these cookery workshops and we have this art craft knitting crochet all these kind of workshops mothers day event is also very prominent this is one of the picture in which the mother and the child have been dressed up similarly and this was a great event that we had in which the mothers literally cried that they had never had an opportunity earlier to be on stage it is just because of the library that they got this opportunity and many of them had tears in their eyes so it was a very successful event for us honoring event so we honored the successful women library members 
and being called the advisor of the UT Chandigarh. Yoga classes for the fitness. Senior citizens are very important part of our community. So we have these special reserved spaces for them so that they are comfortable, large print book section for them so that they are able to read easily. Digital literacy programs, financial literacy programs, computer learning, mobile phone learning programs are held for them. So during Corona, this part, we got feedback that it really worked for them because during Corona, the young were just hooked to their own mobile gadgets and all, but the ones who had learned this were also uh, able to use that during that time because that was the only source. But the library also went a step ahead and we used to provide them home delivery of books during Corona because many other senior citizens who didn't have access to other digital resources. So they used to come to the library, stand outside when the library was closed, that what do we do? We have nothing to do, but we only uh, have this uh, to read books here. So we used to delivery, do delivery of books also. Smartphone usage. Then to promote the authors and poets, so we have dedicated programs with them. So book release is very common in our library. We partner with the authors, publishers, to, and literary organizations to hold this event so that they have one-to-one -one conversation with the readers. The readers of the library know uh, what book is there and what the book has the content in it and to interact with the author directly. Face-to-face -face with authors in which they talk about their books. And we also have a dedicated Chandigarh author section in our library, in which the authors, the books written by the Chandigarh authors, they are kept separately in this section. In the day celebrations, and for the differently abled, we have this uh, special corner here, and we have all sorts of equipment for them, including braille books. And we have children coming here in the library using these books, as well as uh, converting the normal books into the audio uh, through the softwares that we have. Transgender community, we, they are welcome in the library. We do organize awareness programs regarding that community so that they are felt welcome, not only in the library, but in the society as a whole. So have, we have these transgenders who talk about their lives and we support the transgender community. We do other programs with them. So there are a lot of things which we can do inside the library, but we have to cross the four walls of the library and go in for the outreach beyond the four walls. So in this, for the visually handicapped, we go to the Blind Institute directly and we organize programs there. We go to the Women Destitute Homes, that is the Nari Niketans, in which these destitute women are there and sometimes they don't know what to do with their lives. So we promote them to read and we do programs for them for their skill development as well. Juvenile homes. So juvenile homes are the ones in which the children like who have not turned 18 as yet, they have committed crime and they have kept being kept in the juvenile homes. So we talk to them and bring them into reading, tell them about other resources, other things which we can do, organize activities for them, storytelling sessions for them. And we do have success story also from this visit. One of the inmates, he came to the library and he became a member and he did his graduation. He got a job and now he is abroad. He moved to the United Kingdom and he is in touch with us. Senior citizens, we go to the senior citizen homes and we talk to them because they feel lonely over there. Private school children somehow manage to come to the library in large numbers, even during orientations, but the government school children, they are left out. Many a times they are left out. So we do outreach there. We go to the government schools and we organize sessions over there. In slums, we go, we sensitize them, the importance of libraries, that they should come to the libraries, use the library services, outreach storytelling also in slums and monasteries and other places. Uh, this one was specifically done on the Girl Child Day. Will be distributed. Uh, sorry, we I, I myself personally told stories to them and motivated them to so they can have a career of their own when they grow up. And 
they were away from all their inhibitions and they told us what they want to be really in their life. And two, three of them also became library members and they are still regular uh, visitors of the library. Walkathon at Sukhna Lake, which we do is the main prime area to this place in Chandigarh. So we do such kind of walks to promote library. So this is all advocacy that we do. Library advocacy is very important. Because once the people uh, attach with the library, so other SDGs can automatically be achieved. So we set up our stalls in fairs and carnivals. And where VIPs come there and they know what the library is doing there. Plays on social themes. So like I told you earlier, no matter what the SDG is, such kind of plays and Nukkar Nataks can be done to sensitize the users. So this one was on reading and using libraries. And supporting the government initiatives is also very important. Like Swachta Abhyan, Nasha Mukt Bharat Abhyan, Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao. So you should try to adopt all such things in your libraries and contribute to your national initiatives, which is very, very important. Because somewhere the national initiatives, they are also linked to the global goals, which are the sustainable development goals. So information about the SDGs is also very important. So whenever we have a chance, like I showed you these posters, which I have. So at times during the SDG day also we have. So we promote such kind of things with the community. Group art work, which also is a quite common thing whenever we go. We try to involve children so that they have such kind of a mental peace with them because mental health is also very important. So participation in Republic Day, I think ours is the first library in the country because I have never heard of this before, a library participating in the official uh, Republic Day parade of the administration, that is your state government. So we made our float and we participated in this administration. So this is part of the advocacy program. So during COVID also, we really want to be, wanted to be involved with the community. So we started with these programs, book fee contests in which people are, were asked to send their uh, selfies along with the book, which they are reading and they were posted on the Facebook page and the number of likes, with the number of likes, the prizes were announced. So the library page also got a really boost during these times. And the people got something to do during these times when they couldn't go out. Then life during lockdown was a poster event that we did in which the whole family had to be involved. That what they are doing at home. So we got lots of entries in this. And the parents and children were together involved in making these posters. Online poetry recitation we did on the occasion of birthday of Rabindranath Tagore. The videos were also put on the social media. Then other uh, webinars on various topics, like this one is on uh, tobacco use, because many people were frustrated at that time and tend to get into drugs, cigarettes, alcohol, and all that. So such kind of programs were made to sensitize them. Online book club, although we have our own book club, but another online book club was also started during Corona. So we had activities with this group as well. Here was another a very good example of partnering, partnering with other libraries. So here during Corona, we partnered with a public library in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. And we organized this program, Festivals of India, in which the each public library had their own state children and they shared about the various festivals and how they celebrated this, uh, how they celebrate the festivals. Because a lot of festivals are very similar or uh, some festivals are organized on the same days but different names. So this was a very interesting session. So this is an idea that you can partner with other libraries as well. Kavisa Melan also we organize a lot of Kavisa Melans. Then storytelling. Uh, at that time, we explored that there was an app in which we could directly uh, tell stories and with interaction. So we had sessions with the children, book release programs were also a part of it. 
So I told you every these activities because this is the kind of activities that we do. Librarians are innovative. You can go beyond your, uh, uh, you can say that fixed mindset and do a lot of innovative activities, which I think should be related or pointed out or connected with a particular sustainable development goal. So now is a task for you. So you have to think of the library services with regard to any three of the sustainable development goals. And I want participation. You can, these 17 goals are in front of you. You can pick up any three and list out the services. I think I can give you two minutes, two, three minutes. You can think about it and then uh, you can speak about it. Is it okay? All participants are requested, as ma'am okay, said. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, all participants, including my colleagues from VBLN, are requested to go through the slide where ma'am actually showcased 17 goals. I can say 17 agenda. Out of this, any three, we can pick it up and we, we have to say two, three minutes about this from our extempore kind of things so that it will be a kind of participative presentation and we have get our involvement with ma'am's presentation. I think it's the basic goal of ma'am's presentation, what she intend to have. So please raise your hands through the chat box and we will unmute you. If ma'am allow, then you will speak. All the participants, please. Yes, please take two, three minutes and think about what services can you give aligned with a particular goal. For example, you pick up good health and well-being and just give me maybe two uh, activities or services which you can provide through your libraries to achieve that goal from the agenda. Yes. So you can pick up any three and two, two services related to each one of those three. Like two services for zero hunger, two services for affordable and clean energy, two services for clean water and sanitization. You can pick any three and two services aligned with each of these three. Um, hi, uh, Dr. Dr. Liza. I am Sushant Banerjee here. From Hello, West sir. West. How are you? I am fine. West Bengal State University, Umash Yeah, uh, nice to see your presentation. I was, you know, waiting to see the presentation. And from the beginning, I was there to hear you. Um, and was going through these 17 goals that is shown to us. Um, I have some other observations. Since you are uh, with IFLA now and you have the opportunity to talk to these people, considering this scenario, in especially in my state, West Bengal, um, if we see the condition of public libraries, we have more than 4,000 4, public libraries in West Bengal we have more, thousand, more than 4,000 public libraries in West Bengal, and most of them are closed. There is no librarian. There is no, uh, no one to open the doors of, the, um, of these public libraries, those which were the, you know, uh, uh, the place where villagers used to come, where 62% of our population is in the village and the condition of libraries are that poor. Especially, do you think, number one, before going to this, I would, I would love to go to these goals. Do you think you can put a word to IFLA that whether we can do something for these libraries? Fortunately, after 14 years, government of West Bengal are appointing 700 librarians. That is one part. That is one part I wanted to talk to you. Second thing is, uh, infrastructure, if we want to think about e-resources, now it is called blended learning. You know, in our state, only uh, villagers get only one to 10 hours of electricity per day, and that too in a very poor condition. So that is the scenario. Third, if you consider the university that is in academic libraries, that is the highest 
library, if you consider, in our state, again, I do not know much about India, but in West Bengal, we do not have money to buy even a book of, you know, which cost two, three, two, three thousand rupees. That is the scenario of my state as far as, you know, public libraries and academic libraries are concerned. So, uh, and again, another thing also I will be telling you, these foreign missions who are talking all big, big things, you know, about uh, sustainability and um, climate change, all these things, they themselves are closing their libraries. American Center used to be a, a big place. American Library used to be considered the place where we used to go. Most of the libraries are sinking now. You must be knowing out of 19 British li Council libraries, 17 are closed. Yes. So coming back. So that okay. uh, we can give some answers to the poor librarians who are asking for answers of these questions. So, uh, like you told me that we should uh, ask IFLA about it. Maybe something can be done. If uh, possible, but, yeah. yeah. But before that, uh, let me give you this news that in the recent Festival of Libraries, which was held in New Delhi in the, on the 5th and the 6th of August, which I happened to attend, it was announced there by uh, the Joint Secretary Ministry of Culture that they are really giving a revamp to all the public libraries. I don't know how soon will it be done, but Madam was really, really interested in that. And 5,000 crores have already been sanctioned, especially for the rural sector, because in the budget also last year, it came out for the development of uh, panchayat libraries and rural libraries. There is a lot that needs to be done. Like you just mentioned that 63% of the population is in West Bengal is in the villages. So these kind of services in a country like India, which is still developing, we need to have such kind of things in the rural sector as well. So I am hopeful that uh, improvements are really going to take place. As far as IFLA is concerned, it's kind of an umbrella organization. So directly funds cannot be provided to IFLA, but a guidelines to the government can be provided. So I can work uh, with IFLA to provide such guidelines to the government of India that such things can be government done. Of and... Government of Ojibwe. I am not bothered about India. Okay. <laughs> I am okay. bothered about my state. Yeah. No, you, you shouldn't think that way. <laughs> think about India as one. So oh, all, the states, <laughs> all yeah. the states, all the states, obviously some are the blessed states as well, but in some states the uh, situation is really, really bad. So I think the government of India should concentrate on those states first, which really need help. So for that, I will mention for uh, West Bengal first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have a nice interaction amongst one of my senior colleagues from West Bengal and of course today's resource person. So let us coming back to man's presentation and what's the intent to open it up. That out yeah. of these seven agendas, if anybody from online board would like to highlight on any three as she raised a point. So anybody please raise your hands to be in the discussion part on any three, as I said, two, three minutes, we can have a, a insight on the topic as we intend to see and listen that what other libraries intend to practice. So that's the intent to know. So may I request for colleagues from Vishwarati Library Network to elaborate by two, three minutes, as I said, any two, three points, what Vishwati Library is practicing, being an academic library, not the public library, not the state central or not other, but we know uh, based on the types, we have some uh, confinement regarding our users and other things. Still, I think many things we are doing, I being a librarian, I don't want to open up, up my, my, my activities. So I can uh, seek uh, opinion from my colleagues or other university librarians, those who have joined from all India, they may also take a part. So please come up and take a participation. <clears throat> yes, please come up with whatever comes to your mind. To your mind. Yeah. No answer is a wrong answer. 
So, Madam, goal number ten. In okay. Terms of the financial literacy, how can libraries promote financial literacy among the readers? I'm uh, I'm not clear about it. Financial literacy. Uh, in our library, university library, open mic, debate program, book exhibition, uh, celebrate days, eminent person. That only already we are doing every time. But, so uh, you but, can but, rope in the financial literacy as well in this by having a talk on how to invest money, how to use your money wisely, what are the various schemes which are available with the government of India or other where you can put in your money, or for the student part, how wisely you can uh, use your money. So such kind of uh, sessions can be done. And uh, on top of that, you can display books on that theme. Another is the sustainable water. That is also very much important topic. And sanitation, uh, sustainable water. I inform all the students that what about the high rise in the cities? There, the rain water, if they discharge in the uh, earth level, anyway, that are not run away by the drain. So, you know, maximum cities are drained are the you know, concrete. So, uh, concrete drain is there. So, that are not penetrate the water in the earth. So uh, many of the high rise in the cities, cosmopolitan culture, the rainwater, if you restore the rainwater, uh, that is also minimize our uh, water crisis. Yeah. For the next generation. I think for that purpose, uh, rainwater harvesting program can be sensitized among the community. Because here in north part of India, recently the area was really, really flooded. You must have heard in the news and things in Himachal are really, really bad. Yes, so what I observe in Chandigarh itself is that uh, on the sides of the road, paver tiles have been put. So earlier, rainwater used to seep in uh, the ground, right? But because of those cemented paver tiles, although it looks beautiful, but wherever the proper drains are not there, so the water stands over there and the place gets funny. So you are absolutely right. This is a big problem, but we should sensitize our uh, local authorities uh, towards that. And I uh, think this, this uh, thing we already done in our university level. Okay, uh, that's uh, rainwater that we discharge in the art level. Uh, that is the important part for sustainable uh, water management. Yes, of course. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you. Actually, madam, we, in our library, actually, in sure. Central Library, Bisoharti. We are practice, practicing many of these uh, goals like uh, quality education. We ensure that quality education being provided to each and every uh, member of the stakeholder of this in, in university, like provide quality education in, in, to ensure uh, such, such initiative like uh, regular awareness program, but uh, resources are, are being uh, uh, acquired by our library and which are uh, I mean to produce more um, positive research I mean uh, research output and uh, gender equality we are uh, practicing many seminars and gender sensitizing program uh, in gender equality and no discrimination in the mem membership and we ensure that the clean water and uh, sanitation sanitization uh, being, being maintained in our library. That's great, sir. I think many of us are uh, doing activities which are around these goals, but maybe we are not aware that this can be linked to this goal. So that was my purpose of this presentation, that if we can just make an effort and link that goal to it. For example, if you're making an event poster, just link the sustainable development goal and put that logo there so that it is prominent and people know that you are taking part in the Global Goals Initiative. And in this initiative may, may be in, uh, introduced or uh, may be imparted uh, through in, in it, it may be not very cost pretty uh, not um, mean uh, cost effective manner in, in awareness mean created um, may be created among the user yes anybody else Okay, so coming to the last slide of my presentation, so whatever we've talked or I've shared, what activities can we do or you have shared, 
So I have just summed up in this slides what all can we do. So what came up was book displays, poster making, organizing quiz, maybe student projects in association with the uh, subject teacher. Wall magazine can be made inside the library in which theme-based displays can be done. Students' contribution of articles, poetry, and other things. Awareness camps, consultation sessions on particular themes, online programs, plays or nukkar nataks, guest lectures, inclusion of art, which is very important for the mental uh, fitness of our minds, usage of computers, quizzes, counseling, storytelling, uh, other competitions, then teachers meet and librarians meet to discuss about these issues, volunteering, going outside the library and volunteering in many issues. Then goal of the month, that means an SDG goal of the month can also be incorporated. Then an SDG book club can also be done. So books related to those themes can be uh, studied around and sensitizing the students and the community. So this is just the summary that I have made. You can add to it. No problem. So uh, uh, thank you, ma'am, for your very, very innovative to me and insightful and many things new to us. OK, it's right, as you said. And uh, our senior colleague, Sushantoda, also said that, yes, it's Many things we are doing, but it is also true at the same time, many things today we are getting learning. That how can we market our library services in compliance with the UNS, UN SDGs goal? Okay, so that of course we will do. And uh, I think before taking, before taking somebody rising hands, let them time. Meanwhile, let me have some sharing my experience with you <clears throat> that in compliance with, as I learned from your presentation, that out of the 17 goals, most of the goals is being practiced over here at Vishubharati. Because of Tagore's legacy, you might be happy to know that we are having 38 village library. And that's the only in country, only of a university who are having direct relation with the village people. And we are the only library who are having school inside the campus. Nursery, I mean, the name of the campus is KG to PG. Matlab, a students having four and a half years age, getting chance at Vishwaradi for education, nursery one, nursery two, like that. Then we have two schools plus two levels. Then again, we are having like a college library. There are 12 institute library, science institute, social science institute, agricultural institute. Then we are having at Apex, this central library. And there are two special library, one is Tagore's collection that is called Rovindra Bhavan Library, and another one is Bangladesh Bhavan Library on Bangladesh Special Collection. Okay. So we are having direct relation with the village people, and there we are having with kind financial support from RRRLF, their matching grant they are providing, and Vishwarath is providing, and that 38 library is providing the new literate section, senior citizen section, newspaper section, even though. Uh, seven, eight library, we are having internet connectivity along with the laptop or desktop, whatever it is. But the thing is that uh, the, the actual outcome, what Sushantuda said, that's true. The actual outcome is yet to be touched up. But as you intend to focus repeatedly, what I love to listen, that we have to do what for our own means for me as individual, means for me as professional integrity, and being the legacy of Ranganathan, since it is a 32nd birth anniversary commemoration lecture series, so we have to do some work for our profession to pay homage to our father of library science, that is Ranganathan, and to me, which is for employability, and for next gen who are getting in the employability. Then, here we are practicing safe drive, safe lives, means driving awareness program, reckless driving, and many days of the year, we are having students awareness program inside the campus. Then plastic-free campus, to make a green campus, plastic-free campus, smoke-free campus. Then what my colleague says that rainwater harvesting or penetrating uh, things. Then we are having 
a special drive in the uh, in the women, I mean female toilet in the central library. We are having sanitary handing machine and sanitary napkin destroying machine, and we are having free sanitary napkin providing management to excel the female user because we are living in the rural 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 part of the India. From we are getting the feeder cater from BPL family, tribal family, and new literate or first generation learning family. Ma'am, this will be you surprising to know after getting admission in UG program, we have to make them open mail ID even to get library membership card. So that we are doing. And we are having one service called scan yourself. Scan yourself. By that system, the, the poorest students when they are getting their online form fill up for their higher education, let's say after passing HS, they intend to take NTA form fill up for All India Business UG CUT examination. Then after UG, they intend to have PG examination. After PG, they need to have net, set, pet, rate examination. And there are many more. So this we saw the library have a system to cooperate the students that yes, your library is with you like an umbrella, like an umbrella. Your library is your shelter. When you found that my guardian, that my parents, that my residential house is not possible to support me, yes, my library is there. And you will agree with me that this is because of the library as a third space. True, being a member of the developing country, it's not possible to me to be accustomed with the first world country as a library, as a third space. But for my thinking, for my teamwork's thinking, I'm very happy that I have a very good team who have a congenial mindset. Whenever we are command and try to do something, they are saying, sir, go ahead, we are with you. My library is open all the working days, physically. Means weekend, Saturday, Sunday, it is 10 to 6 weekend. And in a year, we are having 345 days library is open. During Saladabakas, I mean Durgots of 10 days and some other local holidays, three national holidays. Library is full closed. Otherwise, on an average, 345 to 348 days, library is open. And during exam fever, library reading hour is being extended to offer the library services to the students. Like that, we are having scholars assistance cell. We are having authors workshop cell. We are having publication inaugural platform. Means whenever our fraternity published anything, they are supposed to give one copy to the library and library will make a platform. You have to say something on your publication, be it thesis, be it you know any publication or common interest publication like that. And we are having best users award every year to promote and to convert potential users to active users. We are doing these things. And you will be loved to know that on an average, more than 500 physical footballs in my library. So I'm very, very happy and many things I have to share with you. And in future, we'll it's do. So good to hear you, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I found you that uh, at least some part of India, some professionals of Indian, they are thinking at part with our thinking, or I can say vice versa, whatever they are thinking, we are with their thinking pattern. So, ma'am, we'll try to uphold your perception, whatever you have said, and many things, at least three, four items I found that we will do. By this year, I am assured you that by December, I will do four goals in compliance with even SDGs 17 agenda, four goals I will do by next four months, by this 2023. That is my basic learning pedagogy, being a practice librarian. Okay, so this is my humble submission. Now let it be open for the, for the participants. Raise your hands. We are uh, taking care on the chat box or, you know, uh, in the participants box. If you, uh, Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, um, madam, uh, first of all, I'll, I would like to thank you and, uh, and uh, Dr. Shah for conducting such beautiful sessions. So, you know, in respect of West Bengal, so I am uh, so far from West Bengal sitting now, but I say two things in a sustain, sustain development goal. Hello. Yes, yes. Yes. Introduce yourself. Please introduce yourself first. Uh, yes. My name is Shumi Chakraborty. I am a yeah, PhD from... research scholar. Yeah, you are yeah, from Pune. Yeah, yeah, Nagpur. Nagpur. Yeah, Nagpur. Nagpur. 
uh, sitting uh, sitting uh, far from west bengal in west bengal i see two libraries are there one is in uh, ngo sponsored library this is not getting a sponsor but uh, in the own uh, own interest uh, mr najimuddin sah is there in khanakul in uh, hugli district there is a sashacho suchetana gramin library and that library whatever the sdg you have said madam he is trying to providing such a service uh, distributing the blanket in a winter sessions to the poor community and to uh, conducting a quiz sessions for the poor villagers uh, regarding uh, so small things and uh, uh, the uh, uh, english speaking schools uh, and various various sustainable development goal that he can uh, uphold their societies uh, It most uh, there is a Mohammedan communities is there. So through the through their library, through these libraries, uh, he is trying extensively to develop the society. The library name is Sastrato Suchadana Gramin Patagha, madam. Uh, you can uh, visit the site also there. Okay. Uh, the library has gone uh, mega their sites. Can you And please write is, that in the chat box? Yes, yes. Sastrato Suchadana. Yeah. Sashwat of Suchetona Gramin Pathagar. It is. It is. It is an NGO sponsor. NGO sponsor okay. itself. The the people. He is a librarian in uh, an IT in an IT company. And he is making such library in his small village. Um, oh, very very studying. good to hear that. Uh, such efforts uh, are being another, done. But if you can yes, suggest yes. them that they should put the SDG goal. If they are doing so much, yes, then yes, they yes. should. Yes. I know. I know. It. I know it yes. very well. Yes. Yes. And another another one is uh, district library South Chubis Pond in West Bengal. Okay. Everything is not negative, madam. That uh, yeah. earlier we have listened that in in West Bengal you have to need uh, no various diversity is there. District library South Chubis Pond. There is a uh, Dr. Mod, uh, Modusudan Choudhury. Yeah. Okay. Modusudan Choudhury is a librarian. He is very much interest to develop the society's upliftment mm -hmm. uh, to conduct your mobile library services. Mm -hmm. uh in a winter sessions or in a summer sessions mm -hmm. uh, in a hot day he is carrying his uh, library to the small villages of uh, his areas that is fallen under uh, his yes. directions and another thing is uh, the uh, conducting a drama sessions the renowned drama in west bengal dramatist in west bengal they are small sketches and they are small <coughs> Uh, uh, write-ups that they have uh, written there during that time. So there are there are so many activities they are uh, doing, uh, in giving their endless efforts. Hmm. But uh, th yes, it is definitely that they have also a problem uh, related to the um, <coughs> grant or fan, uh, funds that government is not utilized that funds in. Uh, Funds and grants, you see, will always remain a problem, but you have to find it alternate problem, ways. So. It, it, alternate yes, yes. ways, because where but there is a will, there is a way. I always say that yes, you yes, will that, take that out some way or the other. Yes, if you have a effort and if you yes. are likely to do anything, you are very else, right, Mr. Sumit. Yes, and thank uh, you for sharing. Uh, yeah, thank you, ma'am. Really, if you do anything for the people's sake. It uh, definitely happen. So yes, problem is there, constraints is there, but yes, some people are it also. It should come within society. you from They're inside you that you really want like, to do. Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else to take a part? We have a little five six minutes more to finish. Can anybody? Because you know we are all in uh, service hour time, so we have to pay on our daily routine work. Ma'am is also very busy. Still, she is kind enough to give time by Her Excellency to listen to us. So, anybody, please. Yes, Mr. Uh, M. D. Mori Fudin. Uh, yes. Mori Fudin. Yes, please. Account. Uh, Mr. Sorry Fudin, please unmute yourself and take a part. Not able to hear you, sir. Able to ask. You are not audible. You are not audible. Yeah. If it is if, not, if then there's some problem, you can chat. Uh, right in the chat. Box. Right in the I chat. I will box. take it from there. Yes. 
yeah, yeah. And he has written that uh, he he or his institute follows uh, the goal number six, 16. Okay. He has written in the chat box. Okay, I think due to technique technical glitches, we are not able to listen her, listen him. Hmm. Okay, Mr. Swarifuddin, we are sorry that your voice is not reachable to us. I think if you want to clarify anything or if you want you to can, submit... You can write to me, you can right? call me, you're most welcome. Yeah. I shared my contact details in the last slide, if you have taken. Okay. Then uh, anybody else? I have already <laughs> Okay, so now I think there is no much sharing people. No, there is not much. Okay, so ma'am, with your kind permission, let me uh, now take part for wrap up this session. And from my side, from core of my heart, from my team side, it's a really enchanting session to all of us. We'll take a lesson from this and try to implement something and to the extent possible in our library in future course of action. And now let me request my colleague, Dr. Tapos Kumar Das, Deputy Librarian and in charge Palabhavan Library, that is Institute of Fine Arts, to offer formal word of thanks. Tapos Da, are you on the board? Please unmute yourself. Yes, your video is yes. Uh, thank you, Nimaida, for your uh, for giving me this opportunity. A uh, very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, today, you know, is the third day of this ongoing uh, national program organized by Vishwati Library Network on the occasion of 132nd birth anniversary of Dr. S. R. Ranganathan. IR, who is, was the great personality in the field of library science and also known as the father of library science in India. To pay our respect and homage to him, we, the Vishwati Library Network, organizes a five-day national level program on the topic of skill, uh, on the topic of research skill development in blended mode, and this topic is very much helpful to our research scholar who are pursuing the research activity in the various field, various disciplines. And also uh, we have some famous and popular resource person. They given their kind consent to share their views to lecture in this program. So we are very happy with this program and this program is very important to us and also the research scholar and it is a very uh, significant program to us. On behalf of Vishwati Library Network, I take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks to all of you who are directly and indirectly related to this program. At the outset, I must convey deep regards and hearty thanks, thanks to our today's resource person, Dr. Nisha Singh, librarian, TS, Central State Library, Chandigarh. We are really enlightened by her uh, deliberation on the topic library service, library services aligning with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So, Madam, today we had an opportunity to hear you for uh, more than uh, for uh, one and half an hour, and also we are very much happy and benefited to hear your speech. So thank you, Madam, uh, once again for your informative uh, lectures. Thank you, Madam. Thank and you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, Dr. Sushanto Banerjee, another resource person, he will be delivered uh, his lecture on, the, uh, on 25 August on the topic of blended learning and present uh, Indian scenario has, uh, has also joined this program. Thank you, sir, for your sharing the views in this program. Thank you, sir, for joining this program. And I, saw, uh, I also express my gratitude to Dr. Nimaichat Shaha, 
our university librarian acting for his minute to minute guidance, support, and providing encouragement at the every point of this program. So, uh, so thank you, sir, for your wholehearted support to make this program a great success. I would be failed if I don't express my deep, uh, great uh, gratitude to the participants who join this program and make the program a grand success. I also thankful to our uh, university administration, our colleagues, and also the staff members of the library who, who directly and indirectly related with this uh, program and supported this program. So thank you to all of you once again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. For your uh, word of thanks, and uh, before final winding it up, let me seek consent from ma'am. Usually what we do is that soon after this lecture is over, as you know and believe that it's hard chance since academic university is going on, examination is going on, some teachers, some scholars, even though they are intent to listen, but their regular activities is not create hindrance to join in the board in real time. So to address their needs, not only for Vishwabharati fraternity, but also for global level, because this kind of lecture is having immense value to me and to them. For their addressing and to afford this lecture for future gen also, we like to upload this video in our YouTube channel and to disseminate this lifelong information and valuable lecture to the global level human civilization forever. So if you allow, if you don't have any problem, then only we'll be able to upload it. And of course, uh, tomorrow I will share the link to you so that you can also share the link amongst your community to make it more and more, uh, I mean, useful and pertinent to the, uh, I mean, participants, those who are not able to join on the real time. So I think you will allow us to do it. Yes, yes, most welcome. Okay, okay, so we'll do it. And then I have one announcement that tomorrow our lecture topic is status of Indian allies education. The lecture will be delivered by one of the noted veteran allies academician and professional fighter, none other than who is supposed to be my and all of us grand teacher, means he is our teacher of teacher, that is Professor Laxman Rao Nagabundi, a retired, UGC, a retired professor of Osmania University, and at present he is the president of TSLA, that is Telangana State Library Association. So I request you all to share this message throughout India and abroad, that tomorrow Sarah will incite and give a thought-provoking lecture for us, and we will join and to listen his lecture with these few words and to seek kind cooperation from this kind of Indian LIS academician and professional galaxy like uh, today's Dr. Nija ma'am, please help us in future to cater our professional service to the Indian community. And with your kind cooperation, I think we'll go ahead in future. And vice versa, if you feel any documentation or any resource need, do drop a mail to us. We will try to deliver on our legacy to you. Ultimately, we, in, we are very keen to serve the end users library clientele. So with this mental network, technological network, we want to go ahead with hands to hands, hands to hands, hands to hands. So thank you, ma'am, for accepting thank our invitation. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so okay. much, everyone. Thank you for joining. Okay. Okay. And you can so, contact me at any point of time. I have left my details in the chat. Okay. Okay. And one thing, if, if you have don't uh, mind, then you can share the PPT presentation with me because many of the colleagues afterwards will ask me to share your PPT. So okay. if you give... I will share some, it. I will email yes. you. Yes. Okay. 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 So thank you. Thank Everybody, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Susantada, if you're there... So allow me to wrap up the session online. And we are also keen to listen to you on 25th. Susanthu, are you on the board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there, I'll be there. Okay. 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 This was a great okay. discussion. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Dada. You.
Thank you, sir. Close, ma'am. Get.